evaluate 9 plus 3 times 3 divided by 3. So they're just asking you to remember your order of operations, right? Bed and mouse, you guys remember that. So this would be 9 plus, uh, the, do the, you do the 3 times 3 first, so it'll be 9 plus 9. And then that would just be 18 over 3, and that is 6. So T is the answer to the previous question, and here we go. What is the area of the triangle with base 2T and height 3T plus 2? So the area is 1 half base times height. So the base is 2T, and the height is 3T plus 2. So we've got 12 and 20, I believe. You sub in T equals 6, and that is 120. T is 120. In the diagram, ABC is isosceles, AB equals BC, angle ABC is T, what is the measure of BAC? So ABC is T, so that's 120 right there, and then since AB is equal to AC, these two angles would be the same, so we'll just call them X and X. So that means 120 plus 2X is equal to 180, since the sum of the angles of a triangle add up to 180, so therefore 2X would be 60, and therefore X is 30, and they're looking for BAC, and BAC is represented by X, so... Angle BAC is X, which is 30 degrees. The integer is 390 and 9450. Have three common positive divisors that are prime numbers. What is the sum of these prime numbers? Okay, let's break up 390. I believe it's 2 times 3 times 5 times 13. Uh, 130, yeah. 130 times 3 is 390. Okay, so then 9450, same story. Let's break it up into its prime factors, and I believe that is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 53. So they have three common positive uh, divisors. So the common ones are 2, 3, and 5, as you can see. And they want you to add them up. They want the sum of those, so that's obviously just 10. T is 10, and N is this big long expression, what is the value of N? Okay, let's substitute 10, and when you substitute 10 for T, you'd get 400 minus 100 minus 2 minus 3 times 100 minus 10 plus 3 plus 100 plus 50 minus 1, and put it all over 10 plus 7, and... 10 minus 13. And then you crunch out these numbers. Anybody can do that. I'll let you guys do it. And when you do it all, it's 12 as the final answer. T is 12. Asmi has two fair dice, each with six sides. The sides of one of the dice are labeled 1 through 6. The sides of the other are labeled T minus 10, T, T plus 10, T plus 20, T plus 30, T plus 40. When these two dice are rolled, there are 36 different possible values for the sum of the numbers on the top faces. What is the average of these 36 possible sums? Okay. So the first dice, or die, whatever. Uh, dice is singular, I believe, and die is uh, plural, I think. Two fair die, or two fair dice, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. So for the first one, uh, the sum would be the sum of the sides. Uh, which is obviously 6 times that because uh, there's going to be uh, 6 possible uh, outcomes. Well, there's 36, and each of them is going to appear 6 times. So that's why the, so the 1 will appear 6 times, the 2 will appear 6 times, and so on. So when you do this, this is 126. And the same story holds true for this guy, but remember, T is 12. So that's going to make these numbers, uh, let's see here, T is 12. So 2, 12, 22, 32, 42, and 52, right? So same story. When you add up those guys, it's going to be 2 plus 12 plus 22 plus 32 plus 42 plus 52. And that number is 972. So the total would be the 126 plus the 972, and they want the average, so you divide by 36, since there's 36 sums, 
and that is 30.5. The expression 2x minus 3 squared minus 12 can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c for a, b, c, some numbers. What is the value of 10a minus b minus 4c? Let's expand this guy. So it's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 12. And then expand once more. 2x squared minus 12x uh, plus 18 minus 12. So that's plus 6. So this is the a, this is the b, this is the c. So a is 2, b is minus 12, and c is 6. So then we can calculate that guy. 10 times 2 minus minus 12 minus 4 times 6. So this is 20 plus 12 minus 24, and I believe that would be 32 minus 24, which is 8. T is 8. Line L passes through the points minus 4T and KK for some real number, K. The line L is perpendicular to the line passing through 11 minus 7 and 15, 5. What is the value of K? Like all lines, they're all always going to have Y equals MX plus B. So we have, let me think about this. Well, this one minus 4T is minus 4, 8. And then the Ks, we have no idea what that is. I think that's what we're trying to find. Oh, and then we're given... Uh, Huh. Oh, that's for the second line. Okay, it's perpendicular. Okay, I got it. I got it. It's two, two separate lines there, but for some reason they're given the lines the same symbol, which is very confusing. Since they're two separate lines, they should have at least an L1 or L2 or whatever. But it doesn't matter. I, I can understand it. Using these two, we'll rise over run, K minus 8, and then K minus minus 4. So that's the slope. And I will call it M1, so for the first line. So the second line, it's a perpendicular, so it would be a negative reciprocal. So you take the reciprocal, and then, and then it would be the negative reciprocal, right? That's the negative reciprocal. Okay. Uh, all right. And uh, where do I go from here? <laughs> I think now we've got to figure out Oh, I, I know what we have to figure out uh, the, that second line. Okay, so not, not a problem. That would be y is equal to m2x plus b. So y would be minus uh, k plus 4 over k minus 8x plus b. And then we would, of course, sub in these two guys to get the values for b and then eventually for k, I guess. Um, okay, so if we sub in 11 minus 7, we would get minus 7 is equal to minus k plus 4 over k minus 8 times 11 plus b. So if I isolate for b, it will basically be minus 7 plus k plus 4 over k minus 8. Um, times 11. And same story if I substitute this guy, 15.5, it'll be, uh, let's see here, 5 is equal to minus k plus 4 over k minus 8 times 15 plus b. And therefore, B, if you isolate for B, it would be 5 plus K plus 4 over K minus 8 times 15. And since B equals this and B equals that, we can set them equal to each other. So set them equal to each other. So that means 5 plus K plus 4 over K minus 8 times 15 is equal to minus 7 plus K plus 4 over K minus 8 times 11. Okay, we've got one variable, and now we can solve. So let's see here. This would become 4k plus 4 over k minus 8. And this would become minus 12, I believe. Yeah. 
and then therefore k plus 4 over k minus 8 would be minus 3 and then cross multiply k plus 4 would be minus 3k plus 24 therefore 4k would be 20 and then finally k is equal to 5. t is equal to 5. In the magic square, the sum of the numbers in each column, the sum of the numbers in each row, and the sum of the numbers on each diagonal are the same. In the magic square shown, what is the value of n? Okay, well, the first thing I'd like to do uh, is let's just put in the, the actual numbers instead of working with t's. That will make my life easier, I think. So let's plug in t equals 5 and if I do I will get 13 14 19 22 21 16 uh, that's just n we don't know yet 18 20 and 15 all right so let's uh, let's see well first of all let's figure out what is that magic sum and we can concentrate on that so 19 plus 22 plus 21 plus 16 and that will give me the magic sum that I am uh, going to be working with, and that is 78. So everything adds up to 78, every row, every column, and the two diagonals. Okay, so I guess we have to sort of chase this now. Uh, let's just chase that that X, that box. I'll call it X, and then where, where should I? Um, oh, just the, that column. So X plus 16 plus 20 plus 15, that's 78. And when you solve for x, you'll get 27. So that guy is 27 in there. Okay, so where do you want to go next here? Uh, let's go this diagonal, that y. So that means y plus 18 plus 21 plus 27 is 78. And when you solve for that y, you get 12. So that's a 12. And then where do you want to go next here? I think maybe this, this corner, and then use that column. z plus... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is that going to? No, let's use that row. Z plus 13 plus 14 plus 27. I think that will be help, more helpful. And that gives me 24. And then finally, I think now we can approach this column. So it would be 24 plus 19 plus N plus 12 is 78. And then finally, you can solve for N. And it is 23. The line with the equation y is equal to 5x plus a passes through the point a, a squared. If a is not 0, what is the value of a? Okay, sub in that guy, a squared is equal to 5a plus a. a squared is equal to 6a. Divide through by a, which is possible since a is not 0, and therefore a is 6. t is 6. If the CEMC compasses basketball team, scored exactly 10 T points in each of the four games and scored exactly 20 points in each of the G games. Over this set of games, they scored an average of 28 points per game. What is the value of G? So we got one, two, three, four, and then we have a whole bunch of Gs. I don't know how many, so I'll just put a dot, dot, dot there. So this is G, and these are four. So the first uh, four games, they score 60, right? Because 10 T and T is six. And then for the next one, they all score 20. So they want you to find the value of g. Okay, so before times 60 plus g times 20 divided by 4 plus g. And they're telling you that's 28. So that's the math. That's the equation. So this would be 240 plus 20g is, what's that, 1, 112? 112 plus 28g. So that means that's 8g is, 8g is... 128 and therefore G would be 16. Let T, well T is 16 in this case. The pair XY which equals AB is a solution of the system of equations X squared plus 4Y is T squared and X squared minus 4 Y squared is 4. If B is greater than 0 what is the value of B? Okay so uh, I guess we have to sub in this guy, so into these two. So that would be a squared plus 4b is 
256 since t is 16. And then a squared minus b squared is 4. Okay. Uh, I guess um, just using this, a squared would be 256 minus 4b. So it would be two, sub, in, sub that into there. So it would be 256 minus 4b minus b squared is 4. And then 0 would be b squared plus 4b minus 252. And I think this factors very nicely. b, b, 18, 14, positive, negative. So therefore, b is 14 because b is greater than 0. And that is all they are looking for, just the value of b.